So I'm going to talk about some prison work, but I wanted to start just with some general overviews. So first question is, how did you become who you are? And there's this concept from, uh, from Desmond Tutu called Ubuntu, that basically people become people through other people. We're, we're made for the transcendent and for community. And the second question is, when do people stop changing? And I always loved Bob Dylan's work, he not busy being born is busy dying. So in our lives, how can we help each other? Well, we know about community and communication and helping other people gain self-knowledge and learning forgiveness. But how do we teach that? Where, where does that come from? Well, we get it from our families, we get it from schools, we get it from our community, from our faith community. As adults, if you need help in there, you often go to self-help groups. But for me, the question is, what happens if all of these break down? And the pictures you'll see are of, well, they call themselves guests of the governor. Uh, so next question is, what makes people do bad things? Obviously, there's greed, there's hunger, there's need, there's addiction. There are people who just were brought up with poisonous self-talk. Um, there's inability to see all alternatives. There's just being in the wrong place at the wrong time and being stupid. Uh, and these are pictures of prisons. So who is in prison? Well, we obviously it's easy to call them evildoers. Um, I've met enough of them to know that many of them are just normal people who made really bad decisions at some point in their life uh, or had addiction issues. What's important for me is they're often now not the same people as the people who committed the crimes that they're sitting in prison for doing. So an, an earlier version of this talk had the title uh, Prisoner Monks. And what I want to stress about them is many incarcerated individuals are not the same people. They have access to a lot of different religious and educational and vocational programs, and they have a lot of time on their hands. So many of them have, have found the way to, to do self-work. What we do is something called AVP, and the recipe is one part school, one part church, one part therapy, one part theater, and one part third grade recess. And these are pictures of AVP groups. It's normally a three-day program. The goal of which is, first of all, just to push you out of your comfort zone and have that be OK, and help you find your way back to your comfort zone in a nonviolent way. Teach you to ask for support and help. Teach you to be conscious of communication and body language, your own and other people. And we have this technique called transforming power that I'm not going to get into here. Uh, the overall tasks are just to build a community, get to know one another, affirm one another, mix up, get to know people who are very different from you, and then very explicitly look at communication skills, conflict resolution skills, do a lot of role playing, and at the end, what we call wisdom sharing, which is very important for me. So the way a workshop works is we start off with community building, then we try to get everybody talking, one-on-one -on -one first, then in small groups simple surface topics first, then deeper topics, uh, and to work on these things about transforming power. Historically, AVP started in New York. It was co-evolved between incarcerated individuals and outside volunteers. Uh, it has a strong connection to the Quaker community, but it's not really about Quakerism. It's in 48 US states, most foreign countries. There are youth programs, there are inner city programs, etc. There are also a number of spin-off programs with names like Help Increase the Peace, which is HIP, which is a youth program, or uh, HIROC, which they've been very successful with in Rwanda, trying to get the Hutu and Tutsi communities together. So there are a lot of versions of sort of very similar programs. Um, this is just a picture of a group with, quote unquote, endangered youth in Goleta. And these boys are, are boys that if you met them on the street, you would think they were gang members. A lot of them have tattoos or whatever. But they're incredible role models now because they have become facilitators in the AVP program and are just as proud as you can possibly imagine. Um, so who, who does AVP? Well, again, historically, it's been primarily for incarcerated individuals. But it also is done in youth groups, in church groups, in community organizations, in challenged or wounded communities. And one comment I've heard from a lot of people is, why didn't we do this in eighth grade? They taught us how to drive. Why didn't they teach us emotional maturity? Uh, this is another inside graduation. The people wearing blue are guests of the governor. And this picture I like because the facilitators are all women of a certain age. And I, when I started doing AVP, I thought grandma energy was a real important part of it. Um, 
One question is always, does it work? Well, these are responses from AVP participants. The handwritten ones are from prisoners, and the typewritten one are from prison wardens. And they say things like, you helped me to understand more about who I was. And the wardens are saying things like, I marvel at the dramatic change in attitude demonstrated by their participants. Or what I like is a statistic, only two of the 308 inmates have committed serious violations since participating in AVP. So that's, that's a statistic. Uh, here's another graduation ceremony. In this case, they invited the warden, who's the woman in orange on the left, and behind her, the guard, which we normally don't have. Are there statistics to say at work? Well, there, these are two results from reports. The top one from the state of Delaware shows that uh, over one, three, and five years, AVP cuts recidivism in half. And the bottom one is very recently a study done here in California that shows it cuts it to a third, so from 1.5 to 0.5. Um, why do I do it? It's just these two statements. Most of the people in prison will someday be free, and I want them not to break into my house or steal my car. But more importantly, I go there to be ministered to. So many of these people have incredible just spiritual strength to be able to be in prison and be doing personal growth work. Uh, when I submitted this talk, it wasn't intended to be a pitch. In the meantime, we added a seminar now the first two Saturdays in May. And so if you're interested, uh, you, if you send an email to any address at heaveneverywhere.com, I'll get it. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>